بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين لا سيما الإمام المبين والكهف الحصين وغياث المضطر المستكين مولانا وسيدنا وولي نعمتنا صاحب الأمر والزمان السلام على الحسين الذي سمحت نفسه بمهجته السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك وأناخت برحلك قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Please recite aloud salawat. We are truly thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity once again to witness this season, the month of Muharram, Al-Haram. I know a lot of people that eagerly await the arrival of this month. Why? To rekindle their relationship with the core of this religion, the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Because the Quran says it loud and clear that the only reward that I ask you for in exchange for everything that I have given you is one thing, the love and affection for the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam And the Quran was quick to elaborate. The Quran says, ما سألتكم من أجر فهو لكم. The reward that I'm asking you is for your own good. You will benefit from that reward. Because if you rotate around this axis, if you are in the orbit of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, if you develop a relationship with the progeny of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, you will be on the right path. We beseech God five times a day. Ihdina sarat al mustaqim. Then the Quran says, this path belongs to a group of people. Sarat al an'amta alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Now the question that we need to address tonight is why do we convene every year to listen to the same stories, to the same saga year in and year out? Why do we commemorate the tragedy of Imam al Hussein every year? Before I delve into this topic, allow me to offer my condolences on behalf of all of you. To whom? The person that receives the condolences is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Why? Why? If you break a nail, the pain is excruciating, right? The relationship between Imam al Hussein and Rasulullah is not just a relationship between a grandfather and his grandson. The Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, sallu ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Please recite a second loud salawat. In the love of Lady Fatima, a third louder salawat. Oh. 
The Prophet said many times, Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. Hussein is the soul of Rasulullah. That's why when they butchered Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, they butchered the Prophet. That's why if Muslims from other denominations ask you, why do you commemorate the tragedy of Hussein? Why do you sob? Why do you lament for Hussein? You should tell them that I'm surprised. Why don't you sympathize with Rasulullah when he said Hussein is from me and I'm from Hussein? So everything that befell Hussein befell his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So we offer our heartfelt condolences to the Prophet, to his father Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and to his mother Fatima because she lost a dear son. And sometimes I think to myself that in every corner of the world, there are majalis being held for the remembrance of Aba Abdullah. Millions upon millions of people remember the tragedy of Aba Abdullah in these 10 nights. Why? And who's doing that? It's none other than the Almighty God. He was the one that instilled the love of Hussein and the family of Hussein in the hearts of the millions of people that follow Abu Abdullah. And everyone that gets to know the story of Imam al Hussein can't help but sympathize with Abu Abdullah. And once your heart breaks for Abu Abdullah, you want to know more. You want to embrace Aba Abdullah. You want to follow Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Who? It's God and none other than God. No force, no power in the world can do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did for Aba Abdullah. Despite the passage of time, 14 centuries later, the wound is fresh. As if from tonight the countdown starts and on the 10th of Muharram as if Imam al Hussein is killed on this day, on the 10th of Muharram in this month. Who is doing all of that? It's none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But why? Why is he doing all of that? Why did he instill his love in our hearts? Why do people that otherwise don't come to any majalis would come for their members of Abdullah? Why? One of the reasons is because of Fatima. Because the Prophet said it, and it's mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. Whoever angers my daughter Fatima has angered me. And whoever angers me has angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever pleases my daughter Fatima has pleased me. And whoever pleases me has pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These emotions are divine emotions. These are godly emotions. These are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were engineered for a reason. So that this attachment happens with us, between us and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Now, back to the original question that we need to address tonight, which is about why do we commemorate the tragedy of Aba Abdullah? To us, Ashura is not just history. This is not a history lesson that I'm giving you. Ashura represents the ultimate war between evil and good. Ashura represents the ultimate struggle between virtue and vice, between truth and falsehood, between the real meaning of death and life. And this is an ongoing struggle. This is a war that we experience on a daily basis. This is something that we experience internally and externally. This war manifests itself in many shapes and forms. This is why we need to evoke Ashura on a daily basis. Whenever we're confronted with a, with a challenge, we need to evoke Ashura because between good and evil, we need to take sides. We need to either side with the truth against falsehood, side with virtue against vice. You can't be indifferent or you side with falsehood against the truth. 
Now, sometimes you do it willingly. You side with the truth or you side with falsehood. And sometimes you do it subconsciously. You take small steps. You make small decisions that would ultimately lead you to siding with falsehood, to joining the camp of evil. And that was the story of the people of Kufa. They never thought that one day they will be fighting against Aba Abdullah and participating in this heinous crime against the religion of God, against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam himself. But eventually this is what happened. Why? Because of these small steps. Because of these small sins that they committed. Because they were not willing to let go of the love of this dunya. Now we recite in the dua. Ya laytani kuntu ma'kum. I wish. I only wish if I was with you so that I could succeed eternally. Fa'afuza fawzan azima. What does it take to be with Aba Abdullah al Hussein? What does it take to join the ranks of Aba Abdullah al Hussein? It takes ultimately four things. There were four characteristics that the people of God on the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein, his camp, his companions espoused. These four characteristics enabled them to side with the truth, to side with God, to side with Rasulullah, because when we visit them, when we visit their graves, what do we say? We say, Assalamu alaikum ya awliya Allah wa ahabbah. You're friends of God. You're loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This title, Habibullah, is not exclusive to the Prophet. It was given to the people that supported Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum ya awliya Allah wa ahabbah. Assalamu alaikum ya ansar Allah wa rasulih. You supported God, you supported the Prophet, you supported Ali, you supported Fatima, you supported Hassan, and you supported Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. What were these four characteristics? First and foremost, it was Iman. It was deep faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what gave them the confidence. That's what made them rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trust God and trust his promises. Because Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says that the struggle between us and the Umayyads wasn't just a tribal rivalry. It was more than that. They said God is lying. God doesn't keep his promises when he says, that you will ultimately win if you side with God. That's what God is saying. But they said God is lying. We rule. We get to decide the outcome. But we, the Hashemites, we, the Ahlul Bayt said otherwise. We said, Sadaq Allah. No. God is truthful. That's why Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura, he gave several sermons just to guide these people that had sided with Umar ibn Sa'ad. In one of the sermons, the Imam puts the Quran on his head. Imagine, the Imam puts the Quran on his head because the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt always come together. They are never separated from each other. He comes, the reporter says, that the Imam came, he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that I have had never heard before. And then he praised Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, his grandfather. Then he said, you all know that I am the grandson of, of Rasulullah. Then he said to them, that inna wali Allah. You know who will take care of my affairs, in charge of my affairs? It's none other than God. I am siding with God and I will win. Even if you think that I'm losing, you're killing me, butchering me, beheading me, but ultimately, I am the winner here. But the Umayyad said, no, we will crush you, we will kill you, we will defeat you. And today we 
are just saying one aspect of Imam al husseins victory. What happened to the Umayyads? Imagine if Imam al husseins had pledged his allegiance to Yazid. 20 years later, the Imam would die. They all would perish. But Imam al husseins became immortal. Imam al husseins is invincible. No one can defeat Imam al husseins Despite all the attempts from tyrants throughout history to erase the name of Hussein alayhi salam. But the more they tried, the Imam, the Imam alayhi salam started to glow even more. And that was a vow that was made from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the more they try, the message of Imam al Hussein will survive, will continue to, to exist. So the first thing that we need to tackle life's challenges is Iman. You need to place your reliance on God. You need to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it's on the expense of material gain. I lose money here. I lose the dunya there. Eventually you will win. That's the ultimate lesson that we can take from Ashura. On the day of Ashura, Imam al husseins half-brother, Aun ibn Ali, the brother of Abu al-Fadl Abbas, he was only 16, imagine. He came and he said goodbye to the Imam. The Imam was standing near the entrance of the tent. As he was about to leave to the battlefield, he was showered with arrows. And an arrow is like a, a knife being thrown at you. Long, sharp arrow. Some of the arrows were three-headed arrows. He was showered with arrows. Not one, two, or three arrows, but hundreds, maybe even thousands of arrows. So the Imam looks at Aun and he says to him, Akhi, how do you want to confront an entire army single-handedly? 16-year-old boy confronting an entire army alone? So the Imam asks him, how do you want to do that? Aun's response was mind-boggling. He said, Akhi Aba Abdullah, من كان باذلا فيك مهجته لا يبالي بالكثرة والقلة. A person who has given you the blood of his heart doesn't care about numbers, doesn't care about the thousands of people that have come to shed his blood, are thirsty to shed his blood. I'm careless, I don't care. Then he went to the battlefield, charged at his enemies attacked his enemies until he was killed. So the first thing that we need is Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust God, believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, side with him, you will win. You will eventually win. Number two, the way they viewed this world, this dunya, this is what enabled them to make all these sacrifices, they belittled the dunya. Do whatever you want to do. The magicians told the Pharaoh, do whatever you want to do. Eventually you will die, we will die. So let's die an honorable death. Imam Musa bin Ja'far writes a letter to Harun al-Abbasi. The Imam is in a cell inside a dungeon. He's imprisoned, a prisoner of Harun. And Harun is the ultimate ruler. He writes him a letter. He says to him that every day that passes by and I am inside this dungeon is a day that perishes from your life as well. You will die one day. We will die and we will be joined on the day of judgment. And you will know who is the winner on that day. What we need to do, brothers and sisters, is we need to lose interest in this world to be able to see the true face of the dunya. If you're obsessed with anything, you won't see the deficiencies. If you're in love with someone, no matter how much they tell you about the deficiencies, about the shortcomings, about the bad aspects or the bad habits of that person, you're in love. You won't be able to see the true nature or the dark side of that person. If you're obsessed with something, you won't be able to see the dark side of that thing. Is dunya. You have to try 
to develop a correct view of this world. A distorted view will lead you to side with this dunya. This is what happened to the people of Kufa, unfortunately. They didn't have a right, correct view of this dunya. This is why they were not willing to let go of anything. But the people that were with Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, no. To them, they had an insight, a basira. They knew that this dunya is worthless. Everything in this dunya is worthless. We have no, Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam gave a sermon on the day of Ashura. He said, can't you see that this dunya, we have no control over this dunya. One day you're well, tomorrow you become sick, you fall ill. You go to the doctor, the doctor tells you that you have cancer. This changes the course of your life. This changes everything. This dunya is filled with misery. One of our scholars says that the true nature of this dunya is not seen in nightclubs or in, you know, where people go and have fun. If you want to see the true face of this dunya, you go to the morgue. You go to the hospital. You go to the cemetery. These people had the basira to see the dunya on its true image. This is why they were willing to let go of everything. It's not easy. Let go of their family, their businesses, their possessions, everything. And embrace Abu Abdullah al Hussein and win. They won. And number three, they managed to muster the courage to make the right decision. People are of two types. The first type are people that are not aware of their deficiencies. They may, they may be filled with deficiencies and shortcomings from their head to their feet, but they don't know. And that's a disease in itself. The second type are people that are aware that they are bad-tempered, that they are filled with envy, that they are filled with greed, that they have bad habits. But they need to make the right decision to break off these habits. But they just don't have the courage. This is the season. This is a launching pad for lots of great people that made the most of this month. Listen to all the inspirational stories. This is the time to change. All you need is to make an intention, to commit. What you need is a commitment to join the ranks of Abu Abdullah. I want to change. I want to change my habits. I want to embrace Imam al-Hussein. And if you embrace him, he will embrace you as well. And the fourth characteristics is going against your desires. This is a gouge that we can use on a daily basis. Anything that you want to do, you have a, a tool to measure things with. If it goes with your desires, then it's not good for you. If it goes against your desires, then it's good for you. Now, the reason why we cry and sob is to be with the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim was salam. Imam al-Radha meets with one of his companions. His name is Ibn Shabib. He says to him, Ibn Shabib, when the month of Muharram approached, my father, Imam Musa ibn Ja'far, was never seen even smiling until it was the 10th of Muharram. That was the day of grief, the day of lamentation for the Imam, as if the Imam died or is killed on the day of Ashura. We sobbed so much, we cried so much that our eyelids became sore. We injured our eyelids. This is how much the Ahlul Bayt cried for Abu Abdullah. So he tells his companion, Yabna Shabib, in kuntabakian lishay. If you want to cry for something, you can cry for anything you want, for the loss of a loved one. But if you understand what happened to Hussein and who Hussein is, you wouldn't stop crying. Fabki ala jaddi al Hussein. Then the Imam explains why. He just mentions one aspect of this tragedy. He says, He was slaughtered the way a sheep is slaughtered. Now, the reason why the Imam makes a comparison between slaughtering a sheep 
and the slaughtering of Imam al-Hussein is because for many reasons. Some of the reasons can only be mentioned on the day of Ashura. But one of the reasons is because you usually slaughter a sheep when you're happy, when you're rejoicing, when you're having a feast, right? When they killed Abu Abdullah, they began beating the drums of victory. They were laughing, they were rejoicing, they were dancing over their dead bodies. Imagine what happens to Rasulullah, what happens to Lady Zainab seeing these vicious animals killing Imam al Hussein in the most brutal manner than dancing over the dead bodies. That's number one. And number two, Usually when you see a sheep, a sheep is, you, and is, is an animal that you slaughter. No one will object to why are you slaughtering a sheep. But if you want to kill a cat, you will have hundreds of people objecting. Why are you killing that cat? But when Imam al Hussein was killed, not only no one objected, everyone was laughing, everyone was rejoicing. Lady Zainab came to the battlefield. She said, Ama fikum Muslim. Is there not a Muslim amongst you? This is the grandson of Rasulullah getting killed and everyone is indifferent. Ya Umar ibn Sa'da yuqtalu Abu Abdullah wa anta tanzuru ilayhi. The third reason why this comparison is made is because usually after a sheep is slaughtered, people want to join. People want to, want to have a share. When Imam al Hussein was killed, the tribes that took part in the killing of Abu Abdullah, they started to compete on who to grab what. A tribe would grab the helmet of Abu Abdullah, a tribe would grab the ring of Abu Abdullah, one would snatch the shirt of Abu Abdullah. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وإنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون